Well, welcome, my friends. So, I'm pretty lucky. Got two days off in a row, May 24 weekend. So, this is what I like doing, so I'm shooting again. We've got a target up here at, uh, at 36 yards. And the ground is kind of uneven also. He just got it at the back of his lung. And that one sort of got him in the front of the lung. <laughs> That was a decent one. Um, shooting at these distances, it's really important to hold it on. And I really do find that if I do not relax my arm right to my back muscle, right to my scapula, I'm not going to get as good hits, you know? Basically, I'm just rolling it to go straight, getting the head straight, coming back, getting it straight in the pause coming back straight again so it's all about aligning that that arrow but uh, anyhow here's a couple of shots we took up here and again I would say that this is about as far as you want to be shooting you know and uh, let's get, yeah I guess that's about as far as goes as far as it goes forward anyhow there's our hits okay I'll be back in a minute Okay, my friends, now we have a black bear down here at uh, 28 yards. See him pretty well. His uh, head's in behind a tree, but you know, there it is. Elevation is quite a problem. Well, I don't really like that shot, but it would have hurt him. Maybe at the top and back of the lung. Yeah, that one got him in the heart. <sighs> a little bit of a miss is sort of like a slap in the face that makes you pay attention. Pretty close to the same. Anyhow, that's about as good as we can do today. You know, elevation is a real big problem. Left to right, it's hard enough, but you can get so that your form is good enough that you can shoot pretty straight. But elevation is always a guess, at best, you know. Um, 
you can use point of aim where you look right at the, the gap and put your tip there or you can use a gap where you look at the center and just see the tip in your periphery vision uh, those are some of the things that you can do um, I find that that movie I made about target recognition is a good one where you go out to the club and you actually stand at 20 yards and you look and see where your gap goes for each animal and you make a little drawing and if you're wise you'll do it at 20 and 35 it takes time it's like making a little book but uh, that's what an artillery officer has to do the um, some little tricks that I sometimes will do is you can go out and stand at a target and find out where your gap is and perhaps use the thickness of your little finger you know like say at uh, 25 yards you know that it's the thickness of your finger under the target so you just go like that gives you a rough idea or your thumb on the side of your thumb you see so anything that you can measure another thing that you can do is use your arrow and what you do is uh, uh, let's say you're shooting and you need to find a spot under the target well you put your tip at the top of your arrow right on the center and then you roughly lower it one thickness and then lower it one thickness and lower it one thickness till you find out where uh, how many thicknesses it is and you can roughly go okay that would be three thicknesses at 25 yards so it's going to be right on that little branch there that type of thing uh, a thing that I really do uh, often is I'll take my arrow and put it right where my corner of my mouth is or around my where my anchor will be and I will look at the target and I will simply judge where it feels like it should be and I'll look and 95% of the time that's the spot okay so those are kind of uh, a few little tricks that I use because like I say elevation is a problem you know this idea of just eyeballing it you know, becoming the arrow and just gauging it that's okay when you don't know the distance and that but it's still not as accurate as knowing the spot Howard Hill used the gap method uh, Horace Ford used the point of aim method um, whatever you do you have to figure it out so those are a couple of little hints and uh, let's see what we did down here on Mr. Bear okay okay so the low one was the first one then one up at the back of the lungs and then one in the center and another right next to it so anyhow that's the hits that we did at uh, 28 yards on this black bear okay guys i'll be back in a minute have fun okay guys so just enjoying this beautiful peaceful day it's nice when you live in a big city to be able to get out in the woods a little bit and Pretend you're close to Mother Nature. Elevation. It's a hard one. You have to put your tip someplace. Most people don't realize you have to have your elbow someplace too. The left hand bow hand pressure has to be being pushed from the right arm's elbow ok 
Okay. So when we're trying to get elevation, and again, it's difficult. And if you can, figure out your gaps. But um, when you're drawing it out, you want to feel that pressure. So each time you say you lower this arm, you relax this one in behind it. It's not just this, it's this. So if you correct, let the right fall in behind it again. That's a big help. Um, that's about all I can think about it, of it at the moment. But again, your tip has to be someplace, but because you're pushing from your elbow, your elbow has to be someplace too. So it's just a matter of pressure and uh, guessing the right gap. And that's through experience more than uh, anything else. And uh, when you do that kind of stuff, and you get lucky, you'll get some hits. Okay, guys. Have fun. Think it over. I'll be back. Okay, guys. So here we've got a buck lying down. It's in between the trees, in between four trees, and uh, it's 27 yards. So let's see what we can do with this guy. Got him. I must be Irish. Bugs are coming out. Okay. Again, when you're shooting at a target, elevation is a problem. It's harder than the left to right. Um, with this bow, I'm finding it quite a bit harder in the sense that it shoots faster, so I have to have a much deeper gap. And it's the deeper the gap, the harder it is to, to judge. So that's basically it. Again, I'm pushing from my elbow with this hand if there was a, a line in between my arms, you would be able to see a straight line of pressure. And uh, again, when you set the left hand, always let the, the right fall in behind it again. If you've got to change this, let this adjust again. If you change this, let it adjust again. Always let the right fall in behind. It's a big help. And uh, if you do that kind of thing, and uh, and you do this kind of thing and this kind of thing you got half a chance anyhow let's take a look and see what we did with this uh, target down here okay okay so uh, like I say uh, I must have been Irish or something but those are not bad hits Okay, guys, have fun. I'll be back in a while. Okay, guys, I was talking about the trilliums. See all the trilliums in the woods? We'll just pan around a little bit. 
You can see them just thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. They're just all over the place. You know? It's really, really kind of neat. So anyhow, that is what happens here in Ontario with the trilliums in the spring. It's a pleasant thing. Anyhow, let's move on. Okay guys, we have a wolf down here at, at 24 yards. Just so peaceful today. 24th of May. In the old days, they never ever planted the crops until after the 24th of May. Okay, so let's just do a, a little rundown. Now, <clears throat> we want to stand sideways to the target. We want to put the tip on. Let's just step back a bit. We're going to line up our head and our jaw. We're going to grip that bow. Then we're going to draw back until we get to here. This is where we pause and we let everything relax and go straight. And then we come straight back. Okay? So that's what we're doing. And uh, we've had a pretty good day today, I think. And we've had a variety of targets. I always want to get back uh, and get your back relaxed also. I mean, you do that kind of stuff. You get some hits. Okay, guys. I'll be back in a minute. Bye now.